Hey, this is Scott, and today I just got in the Portkeys BM5, and I was pretty pumped about it, so I wanted to make a quick video just to talk about a few things uh, that I really love about this monitor, and also show you uh, a little bit about how it can take control with the cam control of the Zcam E2. This is by no means an in-depth review or, you know, a completely full-on review. I've only had this for a few hours here, and I just got a chance to play around with it just a little bit, uh, but I just wanted to kind of give a little preview or a little idea of what this monitor is all about because I think it's a really great monitor and uh, the way that it integrates with uh, especially the E2 in this case is really really nice. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at the body. Uh, it's really really well made. It's uh, pretty much all metal as far as I can tell except for you know the buttons or something like that. The buttons on the top are pretty much the same as with you know the LH5T. You got these four function buttons and exit button and the menu scroll wheel and you can push this as a button as well. Uh, you do also have a screw thread in the top here, which is nice, and you have this little kind of cutaway on the side, which I, I think is to use it together with some you know anti-spin type uh, mounts here, so that's nice, and it's the same on the bottom. If you look at the back, you've got the uh, SDI connections in and out on the back, as well as a connection for the focus puller. I believe this is to go to like a wireless follow focus, I believe, from uh, Tilta. Uh, this is the power in, and this does actually come with a cable. I want to show you that in just a second. It's a locking cable for the power in there. On the bottom here, I have the camera control cable, which is also a little bit recessed. Let's see if I can show you that down here. If not, I'll put some B-roll to show it a little bit more clearly. This cable will plug into the bottom here, and it's a recessed port, uh, so that way you don't have to worry about this getting you know, uh, pushed or, or damaged or anything like that. It's kind of protected the way that it is recessed inside the body there, which is nice. And you also do have this USB port on the other side on the bottom uh, to add in your LUTs or do things like firmware updates with this. Uh, it's a really, really nice build, uh, very solid. You can see on the back it's all this passive cooling, but uh, you do also have a fan built into here. You can adjust the speed of the fan on the loudest, on the medium and the highest speed it's a little bit loud, but on the lowest speed um, it's barely audible, so that's nice. You can adjust the speed. Uh, you can also adjust the brightness, and I feel like the higher you go with the brightness, the more you're going to need to do with that fan to kind of help to keep it cool. You do have a single uh, Sony MPF battery uh, mount on the back, and there's a little uh, latch here that you can pull to release the battery, which is cool. It's not just like a, a friction type uh, locking connection here. It's actually a little latch that you pull aside to slide the battery out or to put the battery uh, back in. So it's a nice secure connection for the battery there. Otherwise, on the side, you have you know, your power switch, your HDMI in, your headphone jack. On the other side, you don't really have anything special there. Um, and that's about it for the physical design, but it's really, really solid. That's a good size. They actually do have this hard shell carry case included with it, which is amazing because that's not something that a lot of people include. Even if they do include a carry case, it's a soft, soft carry case, which is not going to be very protective. But uh, otherwise, when I've been transporting my monitors, I, I always try to find, like, struggle to find a really protected area of the bag or uh, I have to go on you know, Amazon and try to find something that will fit the monitor, but this comes with it. It's not you know, anything crazy special, um, but it is a really nice little touch to add this in with the monitor. And uh, it's just you know, got that foam inside there, and these are also included. So let me go ahead and show you what cables and things are included as accessories here. Of course, you get a camera control cable, and in this case, I got the one for the Zcam E2, which is plugged into here. Uh, you do also get a little USB, and their manual is on this USB, so if you want to check out the user manual, it's on here. You can also use this to load LUTs into the monitor firmware, updates, things like that. Uh, so that's nice they include this in the kit. You get a DTAP cable with that locking connector to power the monitor, so that's really, really nice. I'm using this on a larger uh, setup with a you know, V-mount battery, something that has a DTAP power. Uh, I can use this to power the monitor, which is really, really nice. And I love that I don't have to go on Amazon and find another cable. Uh, this is a locking connector perfectly made for this monitor, so it's really, really nice that they included this. They do also include this uh, locking cable for that with a DC plug on the other side, so you know, depending on what power source you're using, you should be able to find uh, something to power this monitor. I believe there are some people on the uh, Zcam E2 site using Sony MPF style batteries that have this DC power out, so that'll plug right into there, I assume. Uh, and it has that, again, locking connector on the other side to plug right into the monitor. So I love that they included things like this in the kit. So powering on the monitor, I'm not going to show you, you know, super in-depth about everything that there is to do with this monitor. Uh, a lot of it is similar to the uh, LH5T, which I've done an in-depth review of. There is a little bit of um, some updates here, I believe. 
because of maybe the newer monitor or maybe newer firmware, but um, for the most part, this is gonna be similar in a lot of ways to the uh, LH5T. So if you wanna see a little bit more about you know, their menu system in detail, go ahead and check that out and uh, that will give you a little bit more information. This is a touchscreen monitor, so it works the same way. If you tap the screen, uh, you get all this information that pops up on the side here. And if you tap that, it will bring you into the menu and you can use the scroll wheel and pushing uh, to go ahead and navigate this menu. Uh, or you can tap on any of these four custom functions which are shown at the top of the screen. Of course, you can use the physical buttons, but you can tap right on here as well. So if I wanna turn on false color, I can do that. Uh, turn it off by tapping it again. Um, you can also just you know, see this as a reminder for what you have set. So if you wanna use the physical buttons, but you can't remember what's what, you can tap on screen and see here what you have set. You can go ahead and hold down some of those buttons for a few seconds to get some additional uh, options, some additional controls or settings for each of those specifically. For example, this is the waveform settings. A lot of this and how it works is very similar to the LH5T. Uh, so I'm not gonna go super in depth to that, but I do wanna take a look at how this controls the Zcam E2 because I have the cable for that. And a lot of people might be wondering exactly how that works. Uh, it's gonna plug into the 2.5 millimeter remote port on the Zcam E2 and that cable will just come up right in here on the monitor. So it's a really clean setup. It's not like the LH5T with the long arm uh, controller where you have two cables coming out of that and it's just kind of a little bit messy. This is very clean. Turning on the camera control feature, you can see there's quite a lot on screen here, and I'm sorry if the, the actual camera information that's displayed on screen makes this a little bit trickier to see. Also, I'll switch the uh, backlight to a little bit higher, so maybe this will be easier to see on screen here. Uh, but you have quite a lot of controls. Up on the top, you have your F1, F2, F3 controls, which are those controls on the front of the body. Uh, I have, for example, F1 set to white balance. And in the recent firmware update on the Zcam E2, holding that down for a few seconds will set your custom white balance. It doesn't seem to work that way here. So if I hold it down for a few seconds, it's not gonna do anything for me there. Um, so it, these functions might depend on what you have programmed to those function buttons and how, how well they work or how much they work. F3, for example, is set to focus peaking for me. So if I tap that, uh, if I can accurately tap it from this angle, you can see that the focus peaking is turned on. So I can tap it again to turn it off. Uh, you can also switch between autofocus and manual focus here. And I found that for me, it works one way. Uh, like for now, I have my camera set to autofocus. And if I tap that, it's going to switch over to manual focus. But if I tap it again, it doesn't seem to go back to autofocus. So again, this is you know maybe something that needs to be worked on um, in the compatibility on both sides, the Z cam and also the, the port keys monitor, but I'm sure that will be updated in the near future. However, you do have the potential to go back and forth between autofocus and manual focus right here. If you are in autofocus mode though, you can tap on this little icon next to that and you'll be able to touch on screen to autofocus. Another thing you can do in regards to focus is to tap the focus icon in the screen here and you have these arrows on the right side which will uh, control your focus. So as you hold them down, or as you press them, your focus will adjust and you can see it's coming into your focus there and you can have more fine adjustments or larger adjustments by uh, pushing on the you know, uh, larger arrows or the smaller arrows there. And as you can see, as you change the focus, whether you have peaking turned on or not, peaking is gonna show up uh, to help you get that focus as you're dialing it in with these arrows here. TW is tele and wide and that's gonna control the zoom. And now again, I don't have a native uh, micro four thirds lens on here. I have an adapted lens, so that's not gonna really work for me. Um, but you do have the potential to adjust that as well. Again, with the arrows right here. TV is going to adjust your shutter. And I have this set to shutter angle um, and it actually doesn't do anything for me. So I suspect that if you have uh, this set to shutter speed, which I will actually test out in just a second, that's gonna work that way. But first I'll just show you also you have control of your aperture and that is working just fine for me. You can see as I uh, press up plus and minus there, it's adjusting my aperture. You can do the same for your ISO. Uh, you can increase or decrease your ISO. You can also one touch here to set it to auto ISO and you can do the same uh, with your shutter. Um, but again, I'm gonna go switch that into shutter speed instead of shutter angle and see if that helps me with this control right here. So now that I've switched over to shutter speed instead of shutter angle, you can see that tapping the plus and minus is actually going to change my exposure, which means that uh, it is adjusting my shutter speed there. So this plus and minus for TV uh, will adjust your shutter speed, but if you have it set to shutter angle, uh, that's not gonna work for you. So again, that's maybe something they could update in the future where this can also uh, adjust your shutter angle. But again, 
you have the option to switch it into auto. You can touch auto right there uh, and that will go into auto shutter. Other than that, you can start and stop recording from here too. So you can see now that my recording has started right here. And if I push it again, I'm able to stop that recording. Sorry, let me get my angle here where I'm pushing it the right way. So you can control your uh, start and stop recording as well from here. So I just want to jump in quickly and talk about a couple of quick things that I did miss uh, and I should make a note of because they're pretty awesome in the camera control function. Uh, this little button with the arrows here will bring you to a couple other screens. The first one that you get to after that has more controls for things like this is your resolution. Actually, your actual resolution here, I'm in 4K to 0.4 to 1. If I press uh, plus or minus, uh, it will jump into the next option in the menu. It takes a second because everything uh, has to recycle, but you can see here that it is switched up uh, the actual resolution and you can see that down here on the bottom of the screen as well. Uh, if I press the minus here, um, it will go back. So this will jump up and down in the actual resolution menu here and it will work the same way for the frames per second. So if you select frames per second on the side, uh, again, it's a little bit slow to respond, so I'm not going to do that right now but you can just press up and down on these arrows and it will actually cycle through the different frames per second in the frames per second menu. The same thing for VFR. So if I have that selected and I press up, uh, for example, let's give it a minute to actually get through here. Uh, you can see my VFR starts from one. Now there's a lot of options in this uh, VFR menu. So if I went through all of those, it would take quite a while, but it does work. Next up is K and that is for your Kelvin degrees. So you can see here I'm at 5,500 and as I press positive, it actually goes down, which is, you know, uh, a little bit counterintuitive, but as you press minus, it will go back up. Uh, so you can adjust your, you can dial in your Kelvin uh, white balance right here on screen by selecting that K as well. So it's a little bit um, laggy, I guess, in the response sometimes. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but it does work. Those are the four options in the second page of the menus. And if you go to the third page of the menu, you get these menu buttons that are on the top of your camera as well as a play button to go into playback mode. So this will work exactly like it does on the camera. So for example, if I press menu, uh, again, sorry, my placement's a little bit off here, the angle that I'm at, uh, you can see that the actual menu does come up and pressing these arrow buttons do uh, does actually you know go up and down. Again, it's a little laggy or a little jumpy. It'll take a little bit of getting used to and maybe a little bit of fine tuning in the firmware, but it does work. You can actually navigate through the menu by using the buttons on the screen here. Um, so let's go back out of that. These other buttons will function as they do as their secondary functions as well. So for example, I have my FN key set to the ISO. So if I push that uh, when I'm not in the menu, let me get the angle right here. So you can see that the ISO is highlighted there and I could adjust that with the arrows or click OK to select uh, and set my ISO. And the same would work. My up button is set to the shutter. So I could select that and you can see my shutter right there. Uh, you can do the same for aperture. You can see it's behind this little uh, voltage marker, but you could select that and adjust that right on there as well. And uh, yeah, those work exactly like they do on the top of the camera. The last page here is just to uh, take control of the uh, tilta follow focus. So if you have that connected to here, you can also control stuff on that follow focus. I don't have that, so I can't show you that, but um, this is the page where you would take control of that. And then pressing the button once more brings you back to that main original page. So yeah, overall, I'm really, really excited about this monitor. I paid for this with my own money. Uh, my wife wasn't too happy about that. So port keys, if you want to send me one more, I'd be really happy to use one of these on my C200 as well. Uh, but this is a fantastic monitor. It gives you a lot of brightness, a lot of inputs. Uh, you have really great touch control. You can control your camera from this monitor. And again, with the E2 especially, it's working really, really nicely. The very, very clean uh, cable setup here. Uh, this is a fantastic monitor port keys you really hit it out of the park with this one and i think this is going to sell like hotcakes anyone using the zcam e2 should have this monitor and i think this is going to be great for a whole lot of other cameras as well again i know this wasn't a full review and i did ramble quite a bit so if you have any questions or comments be sure to check out uh, my lh5t review which may answer some of the questions or you can just leave those questions down below and i will do my best to get back to you if you like this video or found it helpful, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to see more in the future and don't forget to hit the little bell icon to make sure you get notifications when new content is uploaded. As always, thank you for watching.